Hello everyone, Miss Art Garden here, and today I'm going to go through my entire digital illustrating process on a computer in Photoshop, <laughs> the entire thing from sketch to finish, and I will leave time codes in the description if you want to jump around, but we're going to go ahead and start with the sketch, and then we'll do the line art and how I do my base colors super fast, and then we'll do the shading and the finishing touches. So if you want to just skip ahead, look for those time jumps in the description. So I'm going to just go ahead, I'm going to bump my opacity down a little bit, and the first thing I want to do is make a new layer. I've already changed this just so I could save the file but that's my background there I'm gonna make a new layer for the sketch and I'm gonna name it sketch and then I'll be able to sketch on this one without worrying and I'm gonna change you know my color just a couple little things if you want to follow along exactly with me if you wanted to know my document size is currently 20 by 11.25 300 okay so we're gonna start with a circle since we're gonna draw just a simple face and the first thing I'm gonna tell you about is when you're sketching a neat little thing is the transform tool and that's command T or you can go to edit free transform which I have currently going right here command T and this uh, allows you to manipulate the lines that you've drawn already and if you click on these little boxes you can resize them and if you hold down the command key you can manipulate just one of the boxes and if you hold down the alt key it kind of does this thing so say your, your circle wasn't quite perfect and you wanted to mess with it you could do that free transform you can take it a step further by right clicking on it and going to warp and this way you can manipulate it a little bit more so that's just something you can play around with so now we have a little bit more of a perfect circle so to say <laughs> I'm gonna move my brush size down a little bit. Next we'll draw a horizontal guideline for the face and I don't like that one so what I'm doing is I'm keeping my hand on the keyboard and anytime I want to do command Z I mostly just use the command Z or I go up to my history to edit what I've done and then if I do want the eraser I tend to keep it so I go to B for brush, E for eraser and then I can just get it that way. I'm going to draw this horizontal guideline, I'm sorry vertical guideline for the middle of the face and then I'm going to draw a horizontal guideline about two-thirds of the way down and then I'm going to draw the shape of the chin slash face jaw whatever and about down here is where the jaw bends and then the line goes out down here just kind of right under the circle the jaw bends and goes down and that's my general face shape okay and say that now I want to change this because this is not quite what I want so first of all I've made it too big so I'm going to go back to that command T and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so that we'll be able to fit like a neck and some shoulders maybe in here as well and now I want to change this jaw line I will change it after I've added the features but for now let's say actually I think this is sticking out too far so I want to take the lasso tool and that's L or it's right here as the lasso tool and I'm going to select this little line area jaw area here I've just made kind of a big whoops U shape here you can move it around if you want that's what I did there and then I'm going to hit command T now I can alter it all I want and I'm going to go actually to that step further and right click and then select warp and then I'm going to move this up and so that's just a little bit more I wanted these kind of jaw corners to match up just a little bit more and now they do so that was before and that's now you can see the difference and then I'm going to hit command D to deselect and now we'll draw in the features I know this isn't really like a, a drawing tutorial um, I have one of those upcoming soon <laughs> very beginner drawing tutorials but for now we're just going to put in the bottom of the eyes and typically this might be like right under this line but I've drawn it everything's didn't, been a little bit further down this time but that's okay Okay, just whatever works for you. Uh, so I'm going to draw in the eye shapes. I'm going to draw in the bridge of the nose coming down here and then maybe the bottom of the nose here. And these are just placing them in. And it's about here, but since I've drawn this over again, I'm readjusting. And then we will draw in a mouth line here. And so if there's anything you want change, you can always go up to that lasso tool and you can move it around doing that kind of stuff. And you can uh, go to the E for eraser as you're working and kind of erase some of these guidelines. You can go back to B. These kind of things just kind of help you sketch faster. I'm just going to continue detailing out the face here. Add some lashes. We'll do the same thing over here. Maybe like a little thing here for the corner of the eye. Just whatever style eyes you draw or noses, mouths, whatever you want. And I just keep hitting that E for eraser. I'm going to draw a real quick, simple fast face here something that will be easy to ink and color so we have that down we're gonna draw in her eyes maybe looking over this way a little bit I've just decided it's a woman I tend to draw girls more often than men now see we have this here and say I decide well you know what her eyes are very uneven as you can see uh, this eye is significantly higher than this eye so let's do a few adjustments so we're gonna select the lasso tool which was L and I'm going to circle around this eye and then I'm gonna hit command T and I'm just gonna shrink it up this way a little bit to kind of match the um, angle of this eye and then I'm gonna hit return to release that and command D to release that from the thing and then I'm gonna select this and the eyebrow right here 
if you hit the V key, you can move it this way, but I've always found it just easier just to hit Command T. And then once you are in the box here, you can move it around. There's also this option. If you hold this a little further out, you get this little bendy thing with the arrows, and that means you can do angle manipulation with that, um, just like another little feature there. So we wanna get these eyes matched up in the sketch, and that looks a little bit better. And I think that we will work on the mouth now. I want to actually bend that in a little bit. And let's give her a smile. Now that we've drawn her features in a little bit more, it's time to kind of redefine this jawline. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. I'll come in here, come out here for the cheek and then go down. Just keep hitting that eraser or keep hitting command Z if I want. Uh, e for eraser, command Z if I've made a quick mistake I want to fix or just hit that B tool or the B button, sorry, for the brush tool. So there we go. We've kind of reshaped her face. Let's say I want her nose to be a little bit wider. I'm going to click that L for lasso or once again, it's right up here. I'm going to circle around the area that I want to edit and then I'm going to hit command T and I'm going to move this out and up a little bit. And since I've made that adjustment, I'm gonna have to make another adjustment. And instead of erasing it, all I have to do is select that, hit Command T and move that up as well. And then I can move this all up now too, because I've moved all that up, you move this up here. And if you'd prefer, you could just select it this way too and manipulate them all at once like that. So I'm gonna hit Return, hit Command D and we have those features drawn in. Let's give her a quick neck here and then we'll draw in some eh, basic shoulders here. And let's give her a real simple hairstyle that'll be easy to um, ink and stuff so and like this <laughs> and like this I made it maybe a little too big but we'll just fix that uh, with the lasso tool so you can either come here and erase all this which would be perfectly fine and I usually do do that but you can also select this area here with the lasso tool and then hit the delete key and that will just delete that data that's in there I think her hair is maybe a little bit too big it's a little bit too 80s big <laughs> so let's just select the whole thing why not we have the freedom I'm gonna hit command T so I'm gonna go right click and go to that warp option and then I'm going to kind of warp it in. Warp this side out a little bit and then finally I'm going to take the whole thing and blow it up a little bit here. Like I said I want this to be kind of a simple sketch to color in. Okay so we're happy with that more or less. I'm going to change the angle of her hair a little bit here. Let's add a little uh, strappy things so it looks like she's wearing clothes and then you know if you want to do any little extra details that's up to you. Overall that's good enough for the sketch right now I think. We are going to move on to inking. So how I do my quote-unquote ink or put down lines is I use something called the pen tool and that pen tool is right here so I'm gonna just show you like, you know, real quick, this is uh, the pen tool and you can lay down paths like this. And then uh, when you're ready, you can stroke them and they look like lines. So I'm gonna go through how to do that. The first things first, I'm gonna get rid of that. One thing I wanna go over, see now that I have these paths, I can bring them back and I can hide them for now by making sure I'm on the pen tool and hitting return or enter. And that will um, just kind of hide them for now. And it's named default work path. But if you end up doing another thing, see how it's deleted, it's probably hard to see, but it's deleted the old path. So what you wanna do is make sure you save them before you've laid out your entire paths and then you realize that you didn't save and now it's gone and you have to do it again. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put an anchor point. You have the pen tool, make sure you have it on path and not shape right here. And then I have mine on combined shapes. Um, aligned to section. I think these were defaults. So you probably shouldn't have to worry about these. And then I have auto add delete. So what I'm going to do is at the end of a line that I want, I'm going to add an anchor point by just clicking once with the pen tool. And then I'm going to go to where the end of that line is right here. And I'm going to click again. And that's added another anchor point and it's put a vector path between the two. But obviously I want this to line up with this line of the sketch. So what I'm going to do is add another anchor point in the middle just by seeing where I hover over the middle. There should be the little pen tool icon and then a plus sign like right next to it or kind of like down into the right. I'm going to click there and it's going to add another anchor path with these kind of like line stabilizer things. And then I'm going to hold down the command key or windows equivalent. And when I hover over it, if I don't hold down the command key, you can see it has the pen icon and a minus sign. And that just means it'll delete that anchor path. So you can add them, delete them, add them, delete them. But what we want to do is manipulate them. So we're going to add the anchor point, hold down the command key, and then we're just going to drag it up. Okay, and now if you try to click off, you'll just add another anchor point. So what you're going to need to do is if you want to try to click off, you're also going to have to hold down that command key, click off, and now you're off of the path and you don't have to worry. Remember I said that you want to save often. So after I've put down the first line, I usually come to paths. And if you don't have paths open, you'll have to go to windows, paths right here. Make sure it's checked. I mean, it'll say checked here and then you can select the path and then click that work path and you can double click it. You can name it. I'm just going to leave it as path one. And there we go. So now we don't have to worry if we click off of it and then make another path. See, it's created another work path, but we still have that original and we don't have to worry about losing that. So it's important you save your paths if you want to do this technique. 
Okay, so we're gonna keep going, but first I'm going to take my sketch layer and I'm going to bump the opacity down a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see when we ink over it or, you know, lay out the paths. So let's do this again. So we have, I wanna create a path up here just somewhere where the line ends. So I'm just gonna click there. The line ends down here. I'm gonna make another one here. In the middle, I'm gonna hover the pen tool over where it has the plus sign, add one, and then I'm gonna hold down that command key and drag it out. And then you can add another one up here if you want this to be a little reshaped. Add another one here, hold down that command key, drag it out. If I've changed my mind about that, I wanna delete it. I just hold it over with that minus sign and I can delete it, <laughs> okay? So these are kind of like the very, very basics of the pen tool. I'm gonna add one down here, hold down the command key, drag it in. Now you see these little things here that I call like stabilizers. I'm not sure what they actually are called. These can be manipulated too if you hold down the command key and you can move them out or you can move them in or you can, you know, just kind of move them around and they kind of help um, smooth out the lines without it being jagged. So let's put one right here. And um, if you aren't clicked on the path, you can lay another anchor point on it without it being connected to that original one. And then we'll put one here. I'm gonna put an anchor point in, then I'm gonna hold down the command key, drag it in. I'm gonna put an anchor point, hold down the command key, drag it out. And then we're gonna hold down that command key and click off of it. Now say you wanted to go back in and edit this one. You can't click on it, you know, like you'll just add more anchor points. So what you're gonna have to do is hold down that command key and then you can click on it. And now you can edit it if you wanna say add another line here see that little chain icon when you hover over the end anchor point you can click there and now you'll be able to add more lines to it or say you wanted to select the whole thing and move it but if you just hold down the command key and select it and then you try to move it over you won't be able to so what you'll have to do is hit command option shift click on it and this clicks so you see all the little anchor points have turned black and now you can hold down the command key and actually move it around. Okay, so I'm just kind of going through the basics here of the pen tool. If you want a more in-depth tutorial in the future, I could do one. And now let's say you want to add something here that's not on the sketch. Let's add like a little tuft of hair maybe going here. You can do that with the path tool just like you would do with your um, inking. I'm gonna put one path here, one path here, or anchor point, and then I'm gonna add one here, move it down, and now we have a little bit of tuft of hair, and you can see the difference here. Now we have that going in. So, you know, you don't have to, the, <laughs> the point of that is you don't have to just stick um, perfectly to the original thing. And then let's have the tuft of hair going out here. So I'm gonna put a paint anchor path there, one there, move this over, and you can see I don't have to follow the sketch exactly. And anytime I want to check it I can just hide this sketch layer and then go back and be like all right that's fine now see I've, I've clicked off of this I want to go back here so I'm going to hover over this endpoint till I see that chain click on it and then I'll be able to add one here and then I can click on it and drag it out okay so let's keep going let's um, finish doing the hair for now I'm going to just do these swooping hairstyles here let's do one over here and I'm going to go a little bit faster here just because I want to get through all these things and hopefully that won't be too cumbersome to have this video too long okay so we have the hair done now let's take a look at it. Does that look okay? Say now you want to edit this and I don't actually like this line going all the way up here. I want this to be, I want this to stop here. So what you do is holding down the command, click on the line and you want to delete this section say, you can delete between anchor points. And what that means is so um, if I click here where it's kind of highlighted, even though you can't see it is between these two anchor points. And I hit delete and it will get rid of them. But of course I don't want, I don't want this to delete all the way down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an anchor point here where I want it to end and then I can click in, either in between here or at the end of this anchor point and hit that delete key and it'll delete that path and then it's a little bit more like what I want okay so let's keep going I'm gonna add the shape of her face I'm gonna click here I'm gonna click here there's a lot more bins and turns we have to do for the shape of this so I'm gonna click here I want to drag this down to the chin to start with I usually go for like the bendy things so I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna hold down that command key and go all the way down to the bend of that chin but now this is going out a little bit further than the line so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing that I call a stabilizer which I'm sure is not the actual name for it <laughs> And I'm gonna move it up so you can move it a little bit more to manipulate it. I'm gonna move it up until this line matches the sketch line. I'm gonna add an anchor point here and drag it out to the cheek. Add one here, drag it in a little bit. Let's check on it now. So we're gonna hold down the command key, click off of it and hide that sketch layer. Does that look like a good shape? I think that's close enough to the sketch. I'm happy with that. So we'll keep it there. Uh, if you wanna go back in and edit it, just remember you have to hit the command key and then you can work on the line more. Or if you wanna move the whole thing, you hold down command option shift click on it once and then uh, take your hand off shift and then you can move it around so if you have it command option shift 
and you click on it and you accidentally drag it, you're gonna duplicate it too. That's just a little warning. So if you're worried about that, it's not a big deal. So let's keep going. Let's add in her neckline here. We'll do one over here. These are pretty straightforward. Let's do this over here, a little bit different than what the sketch was. So sometimes you wanna change it a little bit different than the sketch, so we'll do that there. And you can keep hiding your sketch layer if you want. Okay, so let's try something a little bit different where you add these anchor points here, here, and here at this angle, and then go here where that line is presumably gonna be. Now, say I want these, I don't want these to be those real boxy, sharp angles. Um, so you command, you wanna have that selected. So you have that one active, and then you hold down the option key. You get this like carrot kind of symbol. And if you click on one of the anchor points, and then you drag out, you'll get these stabilizer things. They'll kind of come. You have to be careful because like when I first did that one, it was going the wrong way. So you want to be noticeful of that. So I'm going to drag that up. I'm going to drag this one up and see it did it backwards again. Draw that one there and there. Now they're a little bit more rounded and I don't have to worry about that. I can do the same over here. I'll have this kind of boxy anchor point shape and then I'm going to hold down the option key and drag this one out and drag this one out a little bit just like that. And then you can add a line here and a line here for the strap. There we go. And now let's go over how to delete the paths again. So I'm going to have one path here. It'll end here. The shoulder will come up and then down. And now I don't want this path here in between where this um, strap is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down that command key. If I've clicked off it, I'm going to hold down the command key to reselect it. I'm going to add an anchor point right at the edge here of this line. And I'm going to add another one. It's actually already there, but I'm going to add this one here at the edge of this line. Click off of it with holding the command key we're going to click off of it holding the command key we're going to click in that area that we just got ready and then we're going to hit the delete key and then we can hold down the command key and click off again and there you go you can see it's now got that gap and we don't have to worry about going in and erasing that or anything we'll do the same thing over here while i see it i'm going to pull down this hair a little bit and then we're going to take the neckline it'll end over here i'm going to move this shoulder out a little bit and then i'm going to take that move it in and then we don't want this here so we're going to add an anchor point here drag it over here a little bit so it matches up and we're going to add an anchor point here and I'm going to drag it so it uh, matches up a bit. I'm going to click off of it, click inside of it, delete. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, we're almost done. Let's go through how to close off your path instead of just clicking off of them by doing this eye. So I'm going to start here at this line, go up to where this eyelash is, make some kind of rough, roughly sort of painted in. Okay, so that looks really rough, right? But I'm thinking ahead of where I'm going to take this and move this up. I'm going to move this down. Oh, and I meant to say at the very end here, my last line, I clicked back on the first one. And you see there's a little circle there and that closes the path. And now this is like an enclosed area. And I'll show you later when you stroke them versus fill them, how that helps you out. So I'm going to take this now and just kind of manipulate these. It's a little bit more advanced, but I'm gonna manipulate these a little bit more to how I want them. So I'm going to take that option key, drag that out so it's a little rounded there. And I'm just gonna move these points around until I am happy with the shape. And then I'm going to take this bottom line and we'll do the same here. Now, if you are drawing uh, a head on face, something you can do is you can duplicate these paths Hold down command, option shift, click here, click and hold here, and then drag outwards. And you can duplicate the eye, and then you can hit that command T or the transform, and then you can right click and select flip horizontally. And then if you are drawing a face head on, those eyes would match up. But since we're not actually drawing it head on, <laughs> and you could just um, trace this, I'm just kind of showing you this to showcase it. What we're going to do is I'm going to transform it, and I'm just going to kind of manipulate this back into that original shape that I wanted. And then I'm going to move this up and over, something like that. And then you can see, you can change them and work them out at the right angle that you want. I'm going to move this out a little bit. I'm going to move both of these up a little bit. Keep reshaping them just like you would. You'll get used to the pen tool. It might be really frustrating at first, but hopefully <laughs> you'll be able to figure it out pretty soon. I'm just going to speed through the rest of the features real quick. And then we're going to talk about how to, you know, like what's the point of paths if you want ink. And I'm going to show you how to stroke it and stuff. If you're doing animation, this is handy because then you can manipulate the paths over and over again without having to redraw the lines. So that's kind of of partly why I got into it. I don't really animate animate, but I, you know, you can kind of make still frames that jump around a bit like an animation. <laughs> We're just doing these last little touches here. One last thing I want to do is um, the eyes. Now it is hard if you want to do a circle with these. I think your best bet would be to take those anchor points and try to do that or whatever. It's just not really worth it to try over the um, ellipse tool in my opinion. So the ellipse tool is right here and it's you and I have it on the ellipse tool. You know, rectangular, rounded, rectangular, and then we want the circle, which is the ellipse. 
you hit U, and if you're on the wrong one, you can hit Shift U, and it'll cycle through them. I hope you guys can see that. It'll cycle through them again, so let's go back to the circle. And then we just add that ellipse tool right where that eye was. And we're gonna do, don't worry about the properties, they just show up every time you mess around with it. And then I'm going to hit Command, Option, Shift again, and then click and drag it to duplicate it. So we have the same size eye. And then I'm going to um, click off of it, and I'm gonna check and make sure those kind of line up. This one, maybe I wanna turn it down a little bit more. And we're gonna do the same thing. This one's already laid out for us. So where these two paths are, I'm just gonna need to select this top anchor point and hit delete. It will sit comfortably behind where that's gonna fill. And for this one, it doesn't have the anchor point here. So I'm gonna add it here, move it here. And then I'm gonna hold down the command key and I'm gonna select this anchor point, hold down the command and shift, select this anchor point, release them both and hit delete. And there we go. So now we have, um, she's got a little bit of sleepy eyes. I'm going to give her a little bit more of a smile by manipulating that line a little bit. We don't want her to be unhappy. All right, so we have all the paths laid out. We can double check that we have saved it because it's always good to do that. And the next thing we're gonna do is stroke it for the line. And what that means is what we're going to do is have the computer basically take the brush tool or pencil tool or whatever you want, but we're going to use brush and it's going to make it so like you took the brush and you dragged it across where all these lines are. Okay. So let's make a new layer to start with. And you can either do the drop down menu layer, new layer or command shift in. And we're going to call this layer line. Now we're going to go to our brush tool. B for brush. I'm going to turn my opacity all the way up. I'm going to see what size it is. 10 pixels. Okay. That's a good size, I think, to start with. So now we're going to go back to uh, pen, P for pen, or you can select it right over here. We're going to right click with the pen tool and you come up with this side menu. And what we're going to do is we want this one, the stroke path option. And don't worry about simulate pressure. I'm going to unclick that for now. Now, what you want to make sure is you have the tool choice since we just made sure our brush was all correct and stuff. We're going to do that and we're going to hit OK. And there we go. <laughs> it stroked it just like I said. It's perfectly even and smooth and clean. I'm going to get rid of that so you can see. Now, a couple things. Some people don't like the rounded edges. If you're worried about that, you can go in and erase them or you can also add some line variation by taking up your path. We've done one with 10. Let's move it up to 15 pixels now. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go back to stroke path. And now this time we are gonna hit simulate pressure. And what that means is that it will have the whitest part in the middle of wherever your line is. Be a little bit thicker than the tapered end. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see it added a little bit of thickness to some of these areas. Like this is a little bit thicker here than this. And it's a little bit thicker here. It's a little bit easier to see when the brush is different, but if you make it too big, you see these little short ones get kind of a bulbous area if you're not careful. But let's go ahead and add a few even bigger, thicker lines by going to our path, selecting our pen tool and holding down command option shift and selecting a few of these, just like how I'm doing here, where you just kind of drag a little rectangle over them. Okay. And we'll do one here. We're going to go back to our brush. Now we're going to move it up. So now the size is 20. And since we already have it as the stroke path with the simulated pressure, as long as we make sure we're still on our line, which we are, we can just hit the return key. If you have brush um, up, if you hit return, it strokes it automatically and you don't have to do the right click menu thing. So now we have even thicker lines here and here and then thinner lines in there. Now I'm going to go back to my paths one more time. And do you remember how I I had you, uh, how we talked about how these eyes were closed paths. I'm going to hit command option shift and select both of these. And then I'm going to do the menu, uh, right click. This is all with the pen tool and go to fill sub paths. Okay. And I want my content uh, foreground color, which is black. I want my mode normal opacity hundred percent and feather radius zero. And then I'm going to hit okay. And that just fills it in. So I don't have to go in and color it later. So that is pretty much it on the line. I have a little extra technique I use at the end that I will go through. But as you can see, once you have the paths, it takes a little bit to lay out the paths. I think it's actually faster. And I like that I have a little bit more control over how clean it is. It's not to say I don't go in later sometimes with my tablet and add some more lines, or if I'm doing something specific, that I want the lines to be a little more sketchy, but this is just kind of the typical technique I use to make it kind of clean and easy and <laughs> manipulatable. So, so the next thing we're going to do is coloring and I have a very fast way to do base colors. So first thing we need is a layer underneath or behind the line layer. So I'm going to click on the sketch layer and then hit command shift N for new layer. And why I'm clicked on the sketch layer is because it always puts the next layer above the one you're currently on. And I'm going to call this color. 
There we go. And now I'm gonna go back to the line layer and I'm going to select this magic wand, which is right here, magic wand, also the W key for the shortcut. And what the magic wand does is it kind of selects like a similar area, if that makes sense. So if you have like a block of colors, it'll select that area of color or whatever. But for this purpose, we want it to select everything inside the line. So if you don't have your lines closed off, this isn't gonna quite work. You might have to close them off and then erase them later if you wanted like an open area. But for now we have this closed off. So when we select it, it's gonna select just the hair and you can see here, um, just the hair area. But um, if you've selected it and it goes into your uh, face, what it means is you have a little gap here where it isn't shut and you'll have to find that gap and just add like a little touch of a line there to make sure it's closed off. Okay, so we're gonna have the wand tool and we're gonna select the hair area here. And then say you want to color it, just pick a random kind of color. I put this in the background. I can You can switch your colors by hitting X and um, I'm just gonna hit Command Delete. You don't wanna do this on your line. This is the example of what not to do. But if you do this, what you end up getting is it's a little bit hard to see with this color, but you get like this pixelated white in between. Here, I'll show you a little bit better with a better color. So you delete and then you get this pixelated white in between where your line is and your color. So even if you do it on this other layer, you still get that pixelated line. And you don't want that. It's, it's very noticeable, even when it's smaller, it kind of sticks out and it looks a little disjarring. So we don't want that. So what we're gonna do, so we've selected the color and we're on line layer, go up to select in the drop down menu. I'm sorry, it's a little cut off. I didn't set this up properly. <laughs> select in the drop down menu and then I'm gonna go to modify and then I'm gonna go to expand. And now this is depending on how thick your lines were. Remember the thinnest our lines were, were 10. If you do one pixel, you'll only wanna expand it by one, your line, cause it, eventually it'll expand over your lines if you're not careful. But since we had ours at 10, I'm gonna put my expand by three and it will go behind the line without worry of it going behind and over the line. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm going to click on that color layer. We don't wanna fill in the line, we wanna fill in the color. Uh, I guess she can have pink hair. And then I'm gonna hit command delete. And then I'm gonna hit command D. And now we don't have that. It sits a little bit more behind the lines. I mean, it's still kind of jaggy, but it sits behind the lines so you don't see that. Okay, and then I tend to um, do gradients for my base colors because I think later when you fill them in, it's a little bit nicer. So let's do this as a gradient. And there's the G is for gradient tool. It might be on the paint bucket. You'll just have to select the gradient tool. So I'm gonna select that first one and then you can do, uh, let's do it down here. So we just have like a little bit of a gradient and that just adds a little bit more interest. So I'll be doing that instead of filling from now on for the like three other colors we'll be selecting, but just, just a heads up. So let's go through this again, but let's talk about how to make this even faster and have the computer do a little bit more work for you by using what's known as actions. So we're gonna start back on this line layer. Make sure you've clicked on there. If you're worried, by the way, of altering this line layer or filling in by accident, you can lock it and unlock it later. But if you need to edit, you'll have to unlock it before you can edit. Cause if you use the brush tool, it says could not use the brush tool because the layer is locked. So that's just one little extra thing if you're worried about messing it up. But now we're gonna go over the actions. So we're on the line layer. We're going to select all the skin. I'm holding down shift as I click around. So it will select multiple sections. And now I have where I want it selected. I'm gonna have the next couple steps going to expand it and clicking on the color layer. I'm gonna have the computer automate that from now on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record myself doing these actions. I have this up here already because this is the third time I've tried to record this video. Okay, so window actions, if it isn't open. And if you do that, it might just kind of pop up like here and you'll just have to put it where you want. And what I'm gonna do is go to this little folder kind of icon. And if you hover over it, it says create new set. We wanna click on that and we'll call this fast color. Okay, and then next to this set, we wanna click on this little create new action icon. It's like a little paper with a corner folded in. So I'm gonna click on that. And now you can see, instead of okay, you have the word record. So let's name it first, we'll call it, we'll call it fill color. <laughs> and then you're gonna hit record. Now every action you do on the computer, whether it's save or close the document or anything like that, will be recorded here. So you have to be careful not to do anything crazy like you know delete everything and then save it and then close it out because then if you do that action in the future, we'll always do that. But but right now we're just gonna record all our actions and this isn't timed or anything, you don't have to be fast. While it's recording, I'm gonna go to select, modify, expand, and we still have it set to three and I'm gonna hit okay. And now you can see under fill color and now has expand recorded. This little red dot means it's recording by the way. 
And then one last thing, I'm gonna click on this color, okay? And now it's all ready for me once I have my color selected to just fill it in and stuff. I'm gonna hit stop here, stop playing recording. And this is the action set I want. It's just a couple little things, but it really adds up time-wise to have this going, you know, have to keep going through all those menu selects. So let's, I'm gonna hit Command D and I'm gonna show you what this does now. So I'm gonna select here for the color of her skin. I'm gonna go up to this fill color. I'm gonna hit this play and it'll automatically recycle from now on in the future back to the beginning of the action. So I'm gonna hit play and now it has expanded. You can see here in the history it's expanded and I am also on color now. So I don't have to worry about going through all those options as the computer will now kind of automate that for me. And it makes coloring a little bit faster. <laughs> it adds up time wise. So it's just, that's my little the Miss AG's special little quickie color trick. <laughs> so I'm gonna select my color base. I'm going to hit G for the gradient and I'm gonna put that in there like that. And then I'm gonna hit Command D. I'm gonna go back up to line, select this, hit this play button, and then I just can put in any color I want for the dress. <laughs> It's kind of kind of an interesting color combination, but we're gonna go with it. I'm gonna select these eyebrows back on the line layer and I'm gonna pick like a darker color here and then I'm gonna um, play and then fill. Okay, and then we'll just do it one more time with the eyes. Select both eyes, play, and her eye color we'll just do like a blue and we'll just fill that. Okay, so there we go. We have our base color all filled pretty fast and easy. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tablet and I'm gonna take white and I'm just gonna go in and fill the whites of her eyes in. Okay, so then we have the whites of her eyes colored and it's time to do shading. Okay, and for shading, I'm gonna go back to using the pen tool, if you can believe it or not. First thing I'm gonna do, since I still have this action recorded, I don't want this color, I want this to be named base. So in the future, when I'm selecting and expanding and stuff through this action, it will pick the color layer. And you have to remember that your whatever layer, it has to be called color for it to auto pick that. So when we create a new layer, we have to call it color, same caps and everything, lowercase and uppercase, everything has to be matching. And now when I do this in the future, and I hit play, it'll go to this layer instead of the base layer because of the name matching up. And um, for future reference, I have this action since I use it so much, it's actually just a one shortcut function key on my computer. So if you get tired of even just hitting play, you can put it as a function key on your computer and you can just go through and whoop, whoop, whoop really fast. So now we're gonna do the shading with the pins hole. And <laughs> what that means, remember when we filled in the eyes, we're gonna do that now with the shadow. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go a little bit fast to start with. I'm going to select all the area that I want to be in shadow, or just at least a group to start with. And then I'm going to manipulate it so it looks uh, to be in the shape that I want it to. Something like this, and maybe like this, and then move this down, something, you know, like that. Like I said, we're going to fill this path and we'll have the shadows be in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through everywhere that I want the shadows on the hair, and I'm just gonna put in the shapes. And you have to either close them or make sure that your lines are uh, your endpoints match up because if you try to say you wanted this to go around, when you fill the path, if they aren't closed, it will just go from the end point to end point. But so if you want them to be closed and moved up, then it will fill it in that shape. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So anyways, we're gonna go through, add some shadows and just kind of random things here and there. I don't wanna spend too long. I'm just kind of doing this as an example so we won't go crazy. You can also go in and add like individual strands here or whatever you want, but I'm gonna just stop at that. That'll be good enough for now. And then I'm gonna pick this color twice. So it's in my foreground and background color. I'm going to select a base number one color and that'll be a little bit darker than the, the current one. I'm going to hit X and then select X's to switch the colors out and then select an even darker shadow color here. So you can see the difference here. We're gonna go back to that lighter one. I'm gonna go to my pen tool. I'm gonna right click, go to fill path. And then when it says foreground color normal, opacity should be 100. This time feather radius is actually going to be 50. And this is just because my document's really big and I'm working on this. Uh, you'll have to play around with how much you feather it. Usually it's like 20 is the biggest number. You'll just have to play around with it. But we're gonna start with 50 and you can see that goes out and creates kind of this really soft shading look. And then with the same color, I'm gonna right click, go to fill path, and I'm gonna do this at 20 and that creates a little bit of a harder line. And then I'm going to switch over to the darker shade and I'm going to go to fill path. I'm gonna to go to seven. And then this creates a really dark line with that first color shaded out. Okay, and I actually think what I'm gonna do, I've seen a mistake. I didn't want this to be so far out. So I'm gonna do it again. We'll go through it one more time since I made that mistake. So uh, starting on your first color, we're gonna go to 50 and then we're gonna go to 20 and then we are gonna go to 
seven and that creates kind of the shadowy look. This is kind of reminiscent of the cell shading and you can see if you're doing animations you can control the shades a little bit more than like when you're coloring them in and stuff. Now remember I have on this path here once I click and make a new path it's gone so if you want to save those paths for any reason you have to remember to do that. So now we're going to select her skin we're going back to the line we're going to hit play so we're back on the color and we're going to do the same thing where we outline all the shadowy places we want for her skin. Okay, uh, we're going to do the same thing as earlier. I'm going to pick these colors here and then I'm going to pick my first shadow color and then I'm going to pick my darker uh, shadow, make this a little bit redder. And the first one I'm going to go with my pen tool, right click and hit fill path 50, fill path 20, and then switch it to the darker color, fill path 7. And there we go, we have her now shaded in a little bit. I missed this little section here. I'm just going to go to line. I'm going to hit play and I'm just going to color it in with that dark color. One more to do is her little straps here. And I'm not going to bother to do the two tone color since it's such a small section. I'm just going to make a little area here and then we'll just do a quick little one tone thing. So we'll pick a green shadow color and then we'll go to fill path 20 and then fill path 7. That's all we have to do and I don't, I don't think I quite made that dark enough so we'll maybe we'll go back to fill path 7. There we go. A little bit darker. So now that's just the quick easy way to shade her in. If you're worried about like for instance this open eye I usually just take the lasso tool and select that area and then you go to image adjustments hue saturation or just command U, and you just bump that saturation down now it's gray and it doesn't look so odd to have that skin tone color. Now what I'm going to show you is how to use a couple different properties of layers to kind of manipulate things. First thing I'm going to do is command shift N and I'm going to call this the blush layer I just it's just what I usually call it uh, it also is the shadow of the eyes. I'm going to go up to line I'm going to select this face area to make my life a little easier I'm going to hit play, but I'm going to make sure this this goes to color. I'm going to make sure I go to blush and that's just so I don't have to go through the expand thing again. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to bump it down to like 30%. I'm going to bump the hardness all the way down and bump this size up. And then I'm going to go in there with uh, a red blush color. Maybe this. That's actually, let's bump this down to like 12 or 13%. This will be a little bit more manageable. And then I'm going to change the property. Before I put this on, I'm going to take this normal. I'm going to set it to multiply. And then I'm going to put the brush on. And this creates like a blush and it multiplies it so you don't lose the detail of the shadows or whatever. And then we can do the lips while we're at it. Let's add a little color here for her lips just real quick. Make the top one a little bit darker. And then with your eraser at 0%, you can go in and reshape any little bits that you want here. Okay, so now she has a blush and she has some color on her lips and with it deselected I'm going to hit D to get that black back. I'm going to go to my brush and I'm going to go ahead and on this layer I'm going to add a little shadow under her eyes. So a couple little strokes there and that should look like shadows. <laughs> okay and now we're going to go to command shift N. We're going to go to highlights. I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to turn it up to 22%. I'm going to give her some highlights on her lip and in her eyes here. While we're here let's go back to the base color. Let's give her eyes a little more detail while we're here. I didn't bothered to before. I'm going to select this color here. I'm going to click color dodge and remember on the base layer I'm going to go in and add just kind of like a little bit of a glow here so her eyes aren't so dead. <laughs> And then on the color layer, I'm going to hit D to reset my color palette. I'm going to go back to normal and I'm going to put this at about 30 to 40%. I'm going to make sure my brush is about 64% hardness and I'm going to add a pupil in just like with my mouse. I click once and once and that just kind of adds a pupil in. And since you have your highlights up here, it's not going to mess up your highlight. You can go up now that you've added those details and add a little bit. I kind of jumped around here. So let's add a little bit of a higher highlight at a harder brush color and one down here. And we can do the same here. Make sure that highlight on the lip is a little bit shinier. Okay, so that's the basics of it. So I'll show you real quick. Let's go back to that base layer like we had and I'm actually going to go back to color dodge and I'll show you how to do a few little highlights in the hair. I'll show you how to change the line color and I'll show you how to do the overlay color effect. And that will be quote the finishing touches section of this. Go to line. We'll select the hair and we'll play the action and then I'm going to make sure I'm on base and not actual color. With color dodge selected, let's pick a color that's a little bit brighter than this one and maybe slightly different. Let's make it a little redder and turn my opacity down to like, kind of depends on which color you're using, how much you need that. So let's just add a few little highlights here. So we'll do that there. We'll make the brush a little bigger, retrace those, maybe make our brush smaller and then go in and add a few more like distinct lines. This is just the quickie <laughs> you can go through and be a little bit more clean about this. 
this and then maybe add like one line there one line there and a swoop and it just kind of creates a shiny effect that's kind of common in like the you know anime i guess style okay now if you want to change the color of your lines like i do go and click on your line hit command shift in for a new layer call it like line color or something and then see this little box here that says use previous layer to create clipping mask we're going to click that and then we'll hit okay and that clipping mask just makes it so you cannot i'm going to turn my brush settings back to normal you cannot mark anywhere except where the information below it is uh, so it won't mark over here just where there's data or basically the lines underneath on that clipping mask layer so what this means is say we want her hair to look this way you can take your brush at 100 percent opacity and 100 percent hardness and go in with that color and now her her, her hairline color will look purple and it'll look a little bit more interesting and you can just go in there and fill it out if you want to really be fast if you know there's main color that you want you can fill the whole thing and then just go back in later and paint over the colors that you didn't want to look that color so we'll have that for her hair and then we'll go in and we'll paint over her eyes black let's make her skin tone like a dark red we'll go ahead and add that in there and you literally are just painting over without trying to hit the other lines too much and i'm just kind of doing this real quick here okay and say now we wanted her eyebrow color a little bit darker we'll pick that and go over that and then lastly we'll do the green of her shirt let's make it a yellow why not <laughs> and then it'll look kind of you know glowy and and uh, just a little more interesting this is just something i do you don't have to do another little stylistic thing i do and i missed her her nose bridge right here there we go and then lastly if you want to do the overlay trick that i do first of all i'm going to turn this down so it's not pure white it's a little bit easier to see now at the very top of every layer you go to the very top layer whatever it's called whoopsies and then you hit command shift in make a new layer we'll just call this overlay and then you're going to change its property to overlay and then you're going to go to your gradient tool the uh, one with the transparent background that's the one you want to pick now and then you can just start picking some random colors and you can put them in like that and it just kind of adds like a varying of colors i think over it it's just a style thing <laughs> this isn't like you know the super technique everyone's got to know this is just kind of a style thing that i do just kind of add a little bit more interest like i said so that's with without it that's with the disco kind of light i think it's nice to make things kind of bright and colorful so that's just my final little finishing touch <laughs> if you guys have made it all the way through the end thank you for watching i hope that this was useful for for you if you have any questions or you want me to go into more depth about anything leave them in the comment section below if you want another tutorial that talks a little bit more about what i did also leave them in the comment section below i hope you guys have a wonderful day take care and i will see you in the next video